Hello everybody. In this video lecture, I will talk to you about limits at infinity. And there are plenty of examples that we're going to um, cover in this video session. So if you would like to have this file, um, you can download it on Blackboard, print it out, and complete the problems as you follow along. Okay, so let's just dive right into it. Let me remind you then, when we talk about limits at infinity, um, this is your notation, we say limit of a function as x goes to infinity means um, it gets arbitrarily large, or we can also talk about limits of functions as x goes to negative infinity. We really want to see the AND behavior of this particular function. So let's go ahead and go through some examples. This first example, we've seen something like that in class. So we want to see what happens to 3 plus 10 over x squared as x goes to infinity. Okay, We say that 3 does not depend on x, so that just stays as constant. And this term right here goes to 0 because 10 divided by a really big number, that's just going to be 0. Okay, So the answer for this one, this problem is just 3. Then if you take a look at the next example, here we have a rational expression, okay? One way to approach this problem is to split up the fraction. And we're going to divide every term in the numerator by x squared. So we're gonna get six over x squared plus two over x and plus three, okay? So similarly, what's going to happen here, this is going to 0 as x gets really big. Same happens to this term. So the answer, once again, is 3. Okay, so we've covered um, similar examples in our last lecture. So let's go ahead and take a look at a problem that includes um, trigonometric functions. All right, let's take a look what's going on here. We want to see what happens to cosine of x over x squared as x gets really large, okay? Now remember, cosine of x itself is an oscillating function, right? So it takes um, all values between negative 1 and 1, but something different happens if we have x squared in the denominator. So one way to think about it is the following. Cosine is a number, right, divide by a large number here, okay? Cosine of x is a number with negative 1 and 1 for any value of x, okay? So let me make that note. For any x, cosine of x belongs to negative 1 to 1, to this interval, okay? So regardless of what that number is, if we divide by x squared as x goes to infinity, we're going to get 0. Okay. Now, one way for you to check if you're computing your um, limits correctly is to look at the graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of our function. Okay, so if I say y is equal to cosine of x, just as is, then yes, then there is no limit as x goes to infinity because it's just oscillating between negative 1 and 1. But once I divide by x squared, okay, you will see that my graph approaches 0. Relatively fast, okay? There's not many oscillations here. So this is going to happen pretty fast. So one way for you to see a visual representation of the limit is graph your function and see what happens as x gets large in absolute value. Okay, let's go back to our examples. Okay, problem four this is just combining different um, examples from above. So let's see what happens to x uh, to four as x goes to infinity. Nothing, four does not depend on x. Okay. 100 divide by x, that goes to 0, okay? Sine to the 4th, 
of 3x, okay? Let me make a note here, sine to the fourth, fourth power, fourth power of 3x. That actually belongs to the interval 0 to 1, okay? Sine itself, function of sine, um, that would be between negative 1 and 1, just like cosine. But because we're raising it to an even power, the values will be positive between 0 and 1. So once again, here I have a number that's just some fixed number for a fixed value of x. It's a fixed number between 0 and 1. Okay, and if I divide that number by a huge number that's squared, then of course this will go to zero. Okay, so zero, and the final answer here is four. Okay, so these are examples where we have either polynomials or rational expressions, not rational functions. We're going to talk about uh, rational functions separately. All right, let's take a look at the next four examples where we'll talk about polynomial behavior. Okay, let's see what happens to the function 3x cubed as x gets really big, goes to positive infinity. So let's take a look at this function. This is the function polynomial of odd degree, odd degree, positive leading coefficient, right? Okay, let me remind you the end behavior of polynomials of this form. Okay, so we have um, upper right and lower left. That's what happens to the branches for any polynomial of a degree and a positive leading coefficient. Okay, which means what? This limit is equal to positive infinity. Okay. Next example, we have negative 4x to the 6 plus 2x minus 1. So this is a polynomial of even degree and negative leading coefficient. Okay, which means what? How does that look like? So, even degree, both branches will be going in the same direction. Negative leading coefficient means we have a behavior like this. Okay? So, in this case, the limit is negative infinity. Okay? So, let me just remind you real quick the four different and behaviors that can happen, okay? So degree is even, positive leading coefficient, degree is even, negative leading coefficient. Then we can have an odd degree with positive leading coefficient, odd degree, negative leading coefficient, okay? What do functions look like? Even, positive. Both branches go up. Think about x squared. That's a good example to kind of remember. Okay? Stuff in the middle, that's different. That varies depending on the function. Even degree, negative leading coefficient. The end behavior looks like that. Both branches are going down. So as x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, the limit is negative infinity, okay? Odd degree, positive leading coefficient. We have the end behavior that looks like this, okay? Branches are always going in the opposite directions when it's an odd degree polynomial, okay? If it's an odd degree polynomial, negative leading coefficient, we have a reflection, right? So you can think about it. Oh yeah, we're reflecting about the y-axis, okay? This is what happens. So, that's it. Those are the only four things that can happen, okay? Now, let's take a look at example seven. This is not a polynomial function, right? You can rewrite this example as limit as x goes to negative infinity 
of 2 to the power x to the 8. Okay? Remember, for polynomial functions, the degrees of your free variable, free, um, I'm not free variable, your independent variable, x, need to be positive. Okay? Whenever you have a negative degree, that means you have a division. So it's 2 over x to the 8th power. Okay? What happens to this expression as x gets really, really big, but with a negative sign? Okay? This still goes to 0. So be careful when you're dealing with negative degrees. Just a quick example that's not included here. So let's say I want to find the limit if x goes to positive infinity of 3x to the negative first power. Okay, This is limit as x goes to positive infinity, 3 over x. And you know that's zero. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at the next example. Here we have a combination of a polynomial function and a function that's rational. So it's a number divided by something. Okay, so what's going to happen here? This one right here, we know this goes to zero. That's from example above. Okay, two over x to the eighth, that goes to zero. Okay, and now we're back to a polynomial function that we have a table to refer to. So this would be an odd degree positive leading coefficient. Okay, so this option right here odd degree positive leading coefficient, which means what? Let's take a look. This one goes to negative infinity, so we're going to get negative infinity. Okay? Let's say you're not certain. You would like to check this. Let's go back to Desmos and graph this. Okay. So we're going to graph the following function. Y is equal to... Hmm? That's not what I want to do. Y is equal to 2x to the negative, right? Um, let's see. So we're going to do negative 8 power here plus, and what was the last function? 4x cubed, so 4x cubed, okay? We want to see what happens as x goes to negative infinity. The branch here goes to negative infinity relatively fast, pretty fast, okay? All right, so this first page covers examples where we have Let's see, rational expressions, we have rational functions, so example 2 is actually an example of a rational function. We have a trick function over a polynomial, okay, different combinations, polynomials of various degrees with various leading coefficients. All right, the next set of examples will have to deal with rational functions. Okay, rational functions are those, let me remind you real quick, we say a function is rational if we have a quotient of two polynomials, right? Okay, so we say P and Q are poly polynomials. All right, let's take a look at these examples. The first one is asking us to do the following. Find the limit as x goes to infinity of the expression 4x over 20x plus 1. I'm going to solve it in two different ways. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is to multiply each side of the fraction, so top and bottom, by the following. I'm going to multiply it by 1 over x. It's a trick that we can remember. I'm basically multiplying by 1 over x to the power that is the greatest power that I see in this expression. Okay? So 4x times 1 over x, that's 4. So let me write it over here. This is limit as x goes to infinity. 4 over 
let's see, 20x times 1 over x, that's 20, plus 1 over x, okay? Now, 1 over x goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So the whole expression is just 4 over 20, which is 1 fifth. Okay? This shouldn't be really surprising because remember from pre-calculus, we say that a rational function um, that has the same degree polynomials, right? So on here, on top, we have a degree 1. And on the bottom, we also have degree 1. Okay? Then there is, an, uh, there is a horizontal asymptote, which is computed by dividing the two leading coefficients. Okay? So we say the horizontal asymptote here is y is equal to 4 over 20, which is 1, five, 1 over 5. Okay? So this shouldn't be surprising at all. Okay? Now, whichever way you would like to use um, to solve these problems, it's up to you. Okay? Um, however you want to do it. But you can always use both just to check that you got the answer correctly. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Same idea here. Now I have a rational function with quadratic on top and quadratic on the bottom. Okay, so how would I approach this problem? With one method. So here is your one method. I'm going to multiply top and bottom of my expression by 1 over x squared. That's the highest power that I see. Okay. Once this happens, I'm going to get what? Let's see. 3 minus 7 over x squared, right? 1 plus 5 over x. Once again, this term goes to 0. This term goes to 0. We get 3 over 1. And the answer is 3. Okay? Now, what is your horizontal asymptote? Similarly, as above, we'll look at the degrees. They're the same. Okay? Same degree means I'm going to take the leading coefficient of top polynomial divide by the leading coefficient of the bottom. Okay, and you see that you get exactly the same answer. All right, so that is your first scenario. Okay, so let's make a note here. Scenario number one, where degrees of P and Q are the same. Okay. Let's take a look at the next set of problems. So I have two examples where the degree on the top, degree of what we call it P, is less than the degree on the bottom. Okay. How do we deal with this type of problem? Okay. I'm going to take um, a look at the following. 2x squared minus 3 over x cubed plus 2x. So I'm going to do this trick. And I'm going to multiply. Oops, I'm going to infinity. I'm going to multiply top and bottom, just like before, by 1 over x to the highest power that I see in this um, function. So in this case, it would be 1 over x cubed. 1 over x cubed. Okay? Let's see what we get. 2x squared times 1 over x cubed. I'm going to get 2 over x. Okay? Here, negative 3 times 1 over x cubed. So that's minus 3 over x cubed. On the bottom, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get 1 plus 2 over x squared. Okay? And you'll see that all of these expressions, they all go to zero. Okay? So basically what we get on top, we get zero divided by one. Right? Zero divided by one is zero. 
we can divide zero by a non-zero number. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, but as long as we get a non-zero value in the denominator, we're good to go. All right, so similarly, we can think about the horizontal asymptotes. What is the horizontal asymptote here? If the degree on top is smaller than degree on the bottom, you can automatically say y is equal to zero. That's your asymptote. So these two values are the same, not coincidentally. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Here I have a rational function with two polynomials on top and the bottom. Um, one is fourth degree, on the bottom is the fifth degree. Okay, so four, five. I can already predict what my answer is going to be. It should be zero. So let me run through this trick just so we know. X goes to infinity to the fourth plus five over four x to the fifth minus three x. I'm going to multiply it by one over x to the fifth. Okay. Let's see what we get. We get um, one over x plus five over x to the fifth. On the bottom, we get four minus three over x to the fourth. Okay, you will see that this term, this term, and this term, they all go to zero. We're going to get one, nope, not one, zero over four. And that's still zero. Okay, so here's your second, second scenario where the degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom. Okay. One more case to consider, case number three. This is the harder of all of them, okay? Not really, but just a little bit more work um, than the other two. So in here, we're going to say that the degree on the top, the degree of P, is greater than degree of q by one by exactly one okay so you can see in the two example examples that i picked um i have two and one two and one right it could be three and two three and two um four and five a uh, five and four and so forth okay so you get the idea but what happens here um remember in pre-calculus we said that if we have a situation like this we would have a slant asymptote Okay. So these problems require just a little bit more work. I'm going to do uh, my computations here with limits. Um, and on, on the next um, page, I will actually find the slant asymptotes. So let's do this first problem. Um, this one says the following. I have a rational function with a quadratic on top and um, a linear function on the bottom. Okay. So the trick is the following. We're going to find the limit as x goes to infinity. Okay. The trick is similar, but now I'm going to multiply this by 1 over x. Okay. Not 1 over x squared. I'm going to multiply it by 1 over x. All right. So 1 degree less than the highest power. Okay, let's see what we're going to get. Now, we're going to get limit as x goes to infinity. Um, what do we have here? 2x, right? Plus 6 minus 2 over x. Okay, and on the bottom, we're going to get 1 plus 1 over x. Okay, both of these terms will go to zero, right? So this is zero, this is zero. Okay, what we're going to get is this expression 2x plus 6. It's a linear expression, right? As x goes to infinity, 2x plus 6, think about it, that's your um, line with the slope 2. It goes up, it's a positive slope. So as x goes to infinity, 
the whole thing also goes to infinity. Okay? Um, so that's your computational method. Now let's see if I wanted to analyze it from a um, graphing perspective. So let me go ahead and find the um, asymptote, okay, the slant asymptote. So over here I'm going to do the solution to problem what? Problem 5, right? So this is problem 5. Um, finding slant asymptote. Okay, um, students typically don't like this method too much, okay, but let's see what your function is. So my function was f of x is 2x squared plus 6x minus 2, right, over x plus 1. Let me just double check that that's what it is. That looks good. So, yeah, how do we do it? Long division. I know students don't really like it, but oh well, we can power through it. Okay, 2x squared plus 6x minus 2, so we're going to divide by x plus 1. Okay, if you remember how to do it, we'll put a 2 here, so now this is 2x squared plus um, 2, right? Okay, so plus 2 minus we've got to do 2x sorry so 2x squared plus 2x here we go um then we get 0 here 6x minus 2x that's 4x bring the negative 2 down now i'm going to do plus 4 um so that gives us 4x plus 4 minus 2 minus 6 so minus 4 that negative 6 so that's my remainder which doesn't really matter all that matters is that I found my slant asymptote over here. Okay, this is your slant asymptote. Okay, and now um, as x goes to infinity, 2x plus 4 also goes to infinity. Okay, that's a, that's a line with a positive slope. So it makes sense that as x gets really big, the value of this function also gets really big, positive, okay? If you're not certain, let's go ahead and graph this. So here's my function 2x squared plus 6x minus 2 over x plus 1, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. So y is equal to a rational function, 2x squared plus 6x minus 2. Minus 2. Okay. Divide by x plus 1. Okay. Now, if I find my asymptote correctly, then my graph of the function should not cross this asymptote. It was plus, what was it? Plus 4, right? And there you go. There you have it. Okay. So the black graph represents your rational function, and the red one is that's the asymptote. So as x goes to infinity, you see what's happening here. Okay. The function gets really, really big. All right. Okay. That is your solution here. Okay. Let's take a look at one more example, and then we're done. We're done with this section. Okay. Again, here I have a rational function where the degree on top is bigger than degree on the bottom by exactly 1. Okay. I'm going to use this trick right here. So limit as x goes to infinity. I'm going to multiply my top and bottom of this fraction by 1 over x. 1 over x. Okay, let's see what we get. We're going to get x minus 2 plus 5 over x on the bottom. We get what? Okay, 3 minus 2 over x. This expression and this expression both go to 0. Okay, 
So now I'm dealing with an expression x minus 2 over 3. Okay. This is a line with a positive slope. Okay. The numbers themselves don't really make a difference as far as the end behavior. You just want to see what the slope you get. This is a positive slope, which means this limit is positive infinity. Okay, so if you were to do the long division here, okay, it's a little bit messy, but try um, finding the slant asymptote for this example. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer will include fractions, so this is 1 over 3x minus 4 ninth, okay? Um, so just do this very carefully um, using the same steps as we did over here, um, but you will get something that looks like this, okay? And then we can check this with the graph. Okay, and I already set up your graph here. Let's get rid of these. So, oh no, I did not want to do it. Okay, so there we go. So here's my actual function. That's my rational function in the last example. Okay, here is my asymptote. Okay, you can zoom in and see, oh yeah, this is what's happening. It's never actually going to cross. Okay, it gets infinitely close. Okay, but now you see the end behavior of this function. You can actually say more for this particular one. So over here, let's just add one more thing. We can say for sure that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this expression is negative infinity. 3x minus 2, that's negative infinity, okay? Because of the asymptote, right? So the asymptote, the land asymptote is a positive slope. So as we go to positive infinity, it goes up. But if we go to negative infinity, it goes down, right? So here's your picture right here, okay? positive infinity that goes to negative infinity. All right, this should complete the lecture for limits at infinity. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions at all, definitely let me know. Reach out to me via email and I'll do my best to answer your questions.